Welcome back to That Entrepreneur Show. I'm your host, Vincent A. Lancey. I'm Tony Alexander. Whether you are looking to start or scale your business, this is the show for you. Each week, I interview a different entrepreneur from across the globe. I will continue to offer episodes in all industries to provide you with many different perspectives. You never know which motivational journey will inspire you most. Each guest will take you through their story and help you learn from their successes and lessons learned. My guest on the show today is someone who continues to support the show and has several entrepreneurial endeavors to share. As an entrepreneur, Tony combines his human resource professional experience with 15 plus years of leadership experience, both in business and in military to elevate individuals and company through performance management and tailored development plans. There's no surprise that Tony was named Black Enterprise Men of Distinction 40 Under 40 in 2016. He combines his passion for people and talent to deliver ultimate and long-term success. He is the founder of SGI Services based out of Houston, Texas, and this company is dedicated to bringing humanity back into the workforce and keeps you up to date with HR needs and trends. I'm excited for you all to meet today's guest, so allow me to now introduce Tony Alexander. Tony, thank you so much for coming on the show. Hey, Vincent, I want to thank you for having me. Um, as you said, it was long overdue, and um, I'm elated to be here and to share with the audience uh, my journey to entrepreneurship. Yeah, we have a great episode ahead. Would you mind please introducing yourself to our listeners and previewing your story just a bit without giving away too much of your entrepreneurial mm -hmm. journey? Oh, most definitely, most definitely. So of course, again, my name is Tony Alexander. Um, I spent uh, 10 years military, uh, 15 years in corporate America. Uh, with that, um, I've led some of the largest acquisitions and mergers um, across the US. Uh, I have a background in HR as well as employment law and of course, HR. Um, I founded um, SGI Services based on structured growth and intentional plans, um, and I am excited to be able to uh, welcome you into my world of entrepreneurship. Yeah, I know how hard you grind and how hard you hustle every day, but before we hop in, I'd love to ask you, before you went on that entrepreneurial journey, you were advising all these mergers and acquisitions, what was one either lesson from that experience that stuck out to you or one notable experience really that you'd like to share with our listeners? This is something that I still run into with uh, clients today. If I had to do it all over again or talk to myself in the past, you know, on that journey to entrepreneurship, I definitely would have done more research and I would have started with uh, more capital, you know, for my company. And, and what you find a lot of days, um, entrepreneurs, they're so hungry and there's nothing wrong with it, but they, they give up what they, I call your survival job. That's your nine to five. That's your job that pays the bills. Um, but what I did was um, I dipped into, you know, my savings. I dipped into many accounts that I had to fund the business. And it took me two and a half to three years before I turned my first profit. So it was a really tough balancing act. And I really uh, counsel and consult people on uh, definitely looking for things like the minority business loans, mm -hmm. the small business loans, because at the end of the day, you still have to eat, you still have to keep a roof over your head. And, you know, unfortunately, it gets to the point if you don't have that type of capital um, up front to open that business and to be able to even pay yourself, mm -hmm. it was a uh, four years before I even paid myself. So um, that was one of my biggest, um, I would say, mistakes and failures that I did early on um, in the business and definitely, you know, guard people against it. Keep your day job. <laughs> yes, well said. Even I can relate to almost everything you said as far as how long the process is, does take. And you gave us a great teaser there of what we're going to expect in this episode. So I think we have to now hop into the big five, Tony. Each episode, my guest and I will go over these five questions to help you, the listeners, learn what it's really like to be an entrepreneur. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. Let's go. Let's do it. Yes. So can you describe that moment when you realized that you either weren't happy with what you were doing 
or that you needed some kind of change to truly open up those doors for your own business, please share your story. Oh man, I can uh, remember that just like it was yesterday. Um, you know, like I said, you know, I had done a lot of things for the organization that I was working for. I mean, I literally was on the front line of the largest merger in the U.S. Uh, to the point to where the company was actually sending me to London, um, sending me to all of these different places to be able to learn the different cultures and customs of the business practices. So, you know, um, I started believing my own hype, right? Um, so, you know, but, uh, you know, I, I've earned it at this point. But I, I can remember as the assignment um, began to dwindle down and the acquisition had gone through, um, I wasn't ready to go back into a settled environment because I had had a taste of the outside world. Mm -hmm. So this position opened up and I was like, oh my, you know, hey, I've done this. There's no way, you know, I'm going to apply for this and um, this is what I want to do. So um, I applied for the position. I went through two interviews. Um, according to them, I aced them. This came from the HR person, you know, because I, I like feedback. I'm like, yes. how well did I do? And she goes, oh my gosh, you, you know, you, you knocked it out and your resume is impressive. And, you know, internally you are a hypo, you know, top candidate. Uh, so that Friday, the hiring manager actually gave me a call and gave me a rundown on everything about the job and said, you know, welcome aboard, right? And I'm like, oh my, hey, I got the job, right? I got the position. And, you know, this is not to mention a lot of microaggressions that had already happened to me in the company throughout going through that transition. Um, I made some big markers uh, in my career uh, holding some positions as the first African-American male or even just the first African-American. So, you know, I had a couple good check, check boxes uh, on, um, for myself. And that Sunday, uh, I happened to be, and I can laugh at it now, but it hurt. Uh, but that Sunday, I happened to be on Facebook. And um, Facebook can be good and it can be bad. And a colleague of mine was, I saw all of these accolades um, to a colleague of mine. And it was stating that he received the position that I applied for. And I'm like, oh, so they must have made two openings, right? And so I'm like, okay, well, congratulations. You know, um, I, hey, I, I love to see people win as well. And so the hiring manager had told me he was going to give me a call that Monday to finalize the details and what the transition was going to look like. Well, I didn't hear from him that Monday. So that Tuesday, uh, I ended up calling him and I'm like, you know, hey, you know, um, you know, getting ready for this transition and the position, you know, I'm ready. What do I need to do? And he says, unfortunately, we went with another candidate what do you mean you went with another candidate, right? And it, it was so eye-opening because he couldn't give me an answer. He, he just felt that the other candidate was a better fit for the position. And I, I, I told myself right then, I would never find myself in that type of position again, because one, I never wanted to feel that type of hurt because it was a hurt. I mean, you know how it is. You telling everybody, yeah, I just got um, yes. this promotion. I just right. got this. And now you, you, you have to backtrack it mm -hmm. and you can't even explain why you didn't get the position. <laughs> so, so for me, you know, uh, it was a slap in the face. It was another one of those micro aggressions mm -hmm. and I, I told myself again that right now um, I, I'm going to do what people tell me that I'm good at and that was my background in HR counseling people uh, keeping up with the HR trends and that let me know I was no longer happy with where I was yeah I mean so many great points especially finding yourself in that position again you said not happening Obviously, there's a lot of benefits with working for a company. You just show up and you get a paycheck. Friday, you're done at five, all of that. But the game of politics is a big thing in those corporate worlds. Because you have to think you probably told other opportunities, hey, 
I'm going with this opportunity right now. So thank you for your time. Um, but you're absolutely right. You are absolutely <laughs> right. There were there were positions lateral. There were more. Yeah. Uh, there, there were different ones, and you know, I was like, hey, you know, and these other positions were just guided conversations. I didn't right. even need to interview with them. They just wanted to have a conversation and it was kind of like the position is yours. But I'm like, oh no, I I, I just got this position here. And, you know, to find out on Facebook is the first communication, but then to talk to the hiring manager on Tuesday. And, and the part that still infuriates me at this moment is to this day, Vincent, I never got a real answer. <laughs> I believe in transparency and I believe in just being right up front, right where you don't waste time and you don't leave people hanging. But the benefits aside from corporate, you're on your own now. What would you say two of the most difficult parts of being on your own are for you? Well, one of the things you kind of alluded to it earlier, right? Mm -hmm. you, 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 with these corporations, you have the benefits, you have the restricted stock, mm -hmm. uh, you show up and you have that guaranteed paycheck, right? Um, but as an entrepreneur, if you don't get up and hustle and grind, then the bills don't get paid, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I'm very disciplined in, in what I do. Uh, even for the company I worked for previously, I can say, you know, I was putting in 60 plus hours a week. Um, and of course, 60 plus hours a week still netted the same paycheck. But I think the, the biggest thing for me now is as an entrepreneur, being able to say or having to say no to some of the things that I normally would engage in when I was yes. still in corporate America. 100%. And, and it, it becomes it becomes a battle for me because, um, you know, by nature, I'm a people pleaser. Mm -hmm. And so to have to say no to some of these things, um, you know, sometimes it, it, it gets to me. But at the end of the day, I have to realize, you know, I have an organization to run that has my name on it. And so with that, you know, I have to be able to say no and guard my time and my boundaries. I agree with you 100%. I don't mind that I miss out on those things and I haven't for a while. Once I'm all in for my business, nothing, everything else was secondary. So I definitely agree with you there. You have your name on the line. This is something you're passionate about. And I'm very selective of how I spend my time where you may have alluded to it earlier, but is there a greatest failure or lessons learned that is still sticking with you all the way up until today? Absolutely. And, and you're right. I, I alluded to it. Keep your survival job. Now, I, mind you, I did keep mine, mm -hmm. but up front, you know, if you can find and research and get into, you know, small business loans or venture capitalists or investors mm -hmm. to invest in your idea, spend some time doing that up front because there's nothing worse than being up at night and wondering how you're going to pay the bills, right? or knowing the fact that, you know, money is dwindling away and profit is not coming in. So the biggest thing that has stuck with me and I continue to counsel, you know, uh, my clients on it is how to have a work-life harmony uh, mm -hmm. because there, there's, there is no balance, but you need to make sure that you have money in the bank to be able to sustain yourself. And the other thing of it is, is one of the things um, that I would do different because you hear in business all the time, well, pay yourself last. Uh, well, sometimes there isn't nothing at the end <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to pay yourself, right? So you, you have to make sure that you are lined out and you have a good one, two, three to five year plan. Mm -hmm. And you act, actually know the time in which you are expected to turn a profit and you can base that on being able to pay yourself at an earlier time. Um, and the, the other thing of it is um, I probably would have started out with a business partner. Uh, it wasn't until four years later where I brought on a business partner that actually helped me alleviate a lot of the uh, late midnight oil burnings and those types of things there. So if, if it's in the realm and you can form a partnership, um, I definitely would agree with doing that as well. 
A lot of solid points for when you're starting up your business. Me as someone who may have quit their corporate job prematurely, but I really just wasn't happy. And I was on the cusp of what I felt like I'm still on right now. Even back then, it's just constantly evolving of what that next email or next phone call may involve. Definitely try to seek some funds if you want to take your journey further. For me, it was just all in divine time, I guess, because I went from someone working a corporate finance job to now working three jobs, twice the hours, even less pay just to make this dream come true. So if I had some more cash stacked up, it may have probably been a lot easier on me mentally and in the business, Tony. I know you personally. I know you're a hustler. So I'm intrigued by this next answer. If you could choose to have a conversation and learn from any entrepreneur, dead or alive, who would it be? Man, I, I have to say, and it's going to go back to uh, Black Enterprise Distinction um, 20, uh, 40 under 40 in 2016. Um, but it has to be uh, Earl Gray Sr., who is the founder of uh, Black Enterprise. You know, he undertook his very first job selling box Christmas cards uh, for his uncle. Um, and I believe that was at the age of uh, six. And one of the things that they learned about Earl was he could sell ice to an Eskimo, as they <laughs> say, right? Um, but Earl not only did that, you know, and I'm big in corporate social responsibility, but he built a network for the African American community as well. So going from building a magazine to building a multi-billion dollar enterprise that included uh, media, that included all kinds of different outlets. And Earl had plenty of jobs, Vincent. Um, or like, like I say, he had plenty of jobs. He, he didn't only sell uh, box cards. Uh, he became a florist at some point in his career to becoming an entrepreneur. Um, he then, uh, he then uh, established or uh, created uh, his group called the Earl G. Graves uh, Financial Group and Management and began to grow a corporate hedge fund where he funded uh, small businesses such as my own, right? So um, if I could have a conversation with anyone who just grew a dream from the age mm -hmm. of six, from selling business cards to becoming a florist, to becoming a multi-billion dollar enterprise, uh, creating Black Enterprise Magazine, creating uh, Black Enterprise uh, shows. Um, it would be um, an honor to be able to just sit down and have a conversation with Earl Gray Sr. He is certainly an inspiration to anyone who has any business plan or just a simple idea, just anything, just a thought even, someone that can continue to grow their brand. Mine is in a much different scale. Mine started with the book and then we got into the podcast. And now with him, the website, magazine, Tony, a lot to learn from him. Where would this meeting be? If you got to pick the location, where is it going down? Well, if I had to pick the location, it would be going down in my home office. <laughs> so yes. that would be the location because I have tons of things, you know, and, uh, you know, just from a logical standpoint to be able to take and push all of this stuff to him, I would definitely would open arms, invite him into my home and to my life and say, help me here. <laughs> right. Home you know, field advantage. Yeah. What's the next, what's the next, um, what, what is the next thing I should do? What, what should I be leaning more towards? Because one thing as entrepreneurs, we have to remember that we have to stay in the learning stage mm -hmm. and we have to surround ourselves around people that are like-minded and mentors, uh, people who have already crossed the road that we're trying to cross, who's already crossed the bridges or, or overcome the obstacles that we're having. And I, I find that very important. So yeah, I definitely would have home field advantage and invite them into my uh, humble abode. Love that. Well, Tony, it's time to look into the future. We're going to do one year and five years out. Where do you see yourself in all of your entrepreneurial endeavors one year from today? Absolutely. So one year from today, um, and I actually have this kind of written down for myself, 
but I, I want to take on more uh, larger uh, organizations in terms of HR trends, talent development and management. So I want to expand. So whereas my home office in, is in Houston and I work a little bit out of St. Louis and Chicago, yeah. um, I don't have a physical office per se uh, in those two cities, but the goal is to actually have a physical office and presence there because this is where the uh, job market lacks or the data shows that things such as HR, um, employment law, uh, small startups are failing the most. So within one year, I would love to um, have a good foundation in those areas or in those cities. Yeah, continuing to think big. So what, what's after that? I, five years is, um, like I said, you know, um, I didn't start off with a business partner, but I have uh, a business partner now. But five years is definitely to have two to three consultants per site. So let's say, you know, we're talking Houston, we're talking uh, St. Louis, we're talking Chicago. I'm even looking into the Boston area. But as more of the data comes in, I'm five years, I'm looking to have independent consultants to work for me where I can coach and mentor them on the things that I do. And I can kind of step back a little bit and jump back into some of those passions that I mm -hmm. talked about earlier that I had to give up. Um, I can have more time to jump back into that, um, into the community, philanthropy, those types of things. I love the vision because A, how much you inspire people to think bigger and bigger, but also because you have the philanthropic tie to the end. I think that's one of the many reasons why we get along. And Tony, I think it's now a great time to get into the spotlight story. I want to thank you for a great episode so far. And I always share an entrepreneurial journey to inspire our listeners, and I would love your take on it. And as we have an entrepreneur today on the show who is named Black Enterprise Men of Distinction 40 Under 40, I have another entrepreneur who is doing great things in the African-American community in Catherine Finney. She's the founder and CEO of Digital Undivided. She founded Simply Good Media after building the budget fashionista into a global brand. And it really started out what got her going. And I like her story because of the best-selling book, How to Be a Budget Fashionista. Now she's still the CEO of Digital Undivide, and it's an economic empowerment program encouraging the growth of black entrepreneurs by helping women of color obtain funding. Tony, what do you like about her story best? Hey, one of the things I just heard was definitely helping women of color um, get funding. Uh -huh. And, and, and that, that is so important because like right now, women um, are 30% in the workforce. And one of the statistics that I was reading uh, with definitely is gender equality. And this came from an organization called Work Human. But at the current rate, Vincent, it's hard to believe that in order to get gender equality in the workplace, at the rate that corporate America is going, it would take women 108 years just to get to where men are in the workplace today. So I definitely applaud her for um, tackling such a, a, a huge issue. And, oh. um, and, and, and with that, you know, just um, being a role model that other people can see, because I, I, I truly believe you know, um, you cannot aspire to be what you cannot see. And so with that, you know, she, she's a role model and setting a great example for other entrepreneurs uh, because unfortunately sometimes, you know, you can get left behind. And uh, with that, you know, or you don't reach back and pull the other person forward. So just listening to that, uh, just really uh, tickles my soul, I guess, is to say. <laughs> hey, the fact that you pulled out all of those great learning lessons to reiterate to our listeners from that story is one of the many reasons why I got to thank you for coming on today, Tony. I know our listeners are going to see all the value in your episode. I loved how you emphasized don't quit your job too early. You learned a lesson by never finding yourself in that position again, and it's inspiring to see how far your business continues to grow. And of course, the reasons why you chose your entrepreneur because you found all of those learning lessons in there too. Very, very good choice. So thank you. And it is time for the last word. And I also do this in my other podcast series because I want the listeners to really have the opportunity to get to know all of the guests I bring on. Is there something that you would like to share with everyone that we did not touch on yet today? 
Uh, no, but I would definitely like to leave um, some words of wisdom, um, if, if I could say. And one is we always hear um, about passion. And um, I definitely recommend there's a book called The Passion Test. And there's nothing wrong with passion at all, right? Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, most small businesses, um, if they fail to turn a profit in the first two to three years, end up folding or going under. But just make sure that you know what your true passion is and know your why. Mm -hmm. It's so important to know the why. Why are you doing what you do? Are you doing it because you don't want to work the, a 12 hour shift or is it because you're not making enough money or is it passion? And also remember, without action, passion means nothing. You need to know your why. Wouldn't expect anything less from your last word. Thank you, Tony. Would you now mind please taking the time to share your professional social media, the website, any ways for our listeners to request your services or follow your endeavors? Absolutely. Uh, on LinkedIn, you can reach me as Tony Alexander. On Facebook, I'm SGI Services. On Twitter, I'm Agent for Change, uh, and that is a very suiting name for me as well. Mm -hmm. um, also on Instagram, I'm actually Measured Man. Uh, my website is structuredgiservices.com, uh, and definitely I hope to uh, be working with uh, some of you very soon in the near future. Be sure to check out all of his great content, and it is also social media time for the show, and we're on whichever platform you like to use. We're at That Entrepreneur Show on LinkedIn, Instagram, and Facebook, and we're at Podcasts by Lancey on Twitter, so you have updates from this show and a mental health break. Of course, my handles are at Vincent A. Lancey for all social media and YouTube, and my website is VincentALancey.com. If you check out my books, DM me. I would love to hear from you all. We have Mr. Lancey Talks Mental Health, Left for Dead, A Story of Redemption, and How to Transform Your Mindset When the Norm is Changed, all are on my website now. And as always, I will end the show with a quote that inspired me and know it will for you too. This one is from Brian Tracy. He said, quote, it doesn't matter where you came from. All that matters is where you are going. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all on the next episode of That Entrepreneur Show.